Hello all, welcome back to our GIA sessions. Earlier, we were discussing on various sources from which the GIS will acquire the data. And these data are to be inputted before we get the final results and analysis in GIS. The method of getting that data into the computer by a process is known as data encoding. So in today's session, we will learn on various data encoding methods. The data to be input for GIS are generally acquired from variety of forms. Some data are in graphic and tabular forms while other types of data are in digital forms. The graphic and the tabular form include maps, photographs, records from site visit by specialist, non-spatial information from maybe both from the printed and digital files and many others. While the digital form include digital spatial data such as computer records of demographic or land ownership data, magnetic tapes, remotely sensed images, and so on. The process of data encoding and editing we togetherly term as data streaming. Data can be input into GIS using a number of different methods. You know that map may be input by digitizing or a scanning method. Likewise, aerial photograph can be scanned into GIS and satellite images can be downloaded from digital media. It should be noted that all forms of data are needed to be converted to digital form before they can be input into the GIS. So, few basic procedures for inputting the spatial data into GIS are the keyboard entry, digitization both manually as well as automatically, electronic data transfer and entry of coordinates using coordinate geometry. We will learn the first three methods of data input in detail. We will begin with keyboard entry. Keyboard entry or the key coding is the data entry into a file at a computer terminal. This technique is used for attribute data that are available only on a paper. The coordinates of spatial entities like point, line and aerial features can be encoded by keyboard entry. This technique will be more appropriate for tabular data or for coordinates of non-spatial entities that are very small in numbers. If the numbers are very large, then the coordinate features to be encoded better using the digitization process. The procedures of keyboard entry can be used to enter land record information and hence it is basically useful for development of Cadastral Information System. Digitizing is another major data inputting technique. Digitizing is the process of converting information into a digital format. Digitizing is widely used for encoding of paper maps and data from interpreted aerial photographs and satellite images. They are generally done either through manually or through automatically. Manual digitization is the process of geocoding through digitizers. This is the most common method of encoding spatial feature from a paper map and one of the best technique when we require selection of certain features from these maps. A manual digitizing generally require a special hardware which we call them as a table digitizer that you can see on the right side of this powerpoint 
the table digitizer is a flat tablet the surface of this one consists of very fine mesh of wires the table digitizer is linked to a computer workstation the cursor is also attached to the digitizer that can freely move over the surface of the table and the buttons on the cursor allow the user to send instruction to the computer most manual digitizer can be used either in two nodes one is the point node and the other one is the stream node in a point node the user has to start digitizing a line segment with a start node then each change in the direction of line can be digitized with the help of cursor the end of the feature can be finished with an end node thus for a straight line the user can digitize just with a start node and an end node so two nodes are only essential if more number of points are to be digitized between the start node and end node that means that we are digitizing a complex line now by looking into a stream node the digitizer is set to record point based on a selected time interval or distance interval once the user started to digitize the line with a start node the digitizer will automatically record a point maybe at an every half of a second or a certain distance interval like 0.5 cm or 1 cm where the user moves the cursor along the lines to record the shape they need an end node is required anyway to stop the digitizer recording further points now let's look into which are the five major steps involved in a manual digitizer the first stage is the registration stage here the map has to be digitized or the map to be digitized has to be fixed firmly on a table top with a tape the geographic coordinates of the control points are to be digitized with the help of cursor these coordinates are stored either in decimal inches or in degrees or in centimeters these coordinates will help to transform all the digitizer coordinates into geographic coordinates it is essential that the map has to be carefully registered to get accurate transformation of digitized feature the stage 2 is the digitization of major point features or the point end ids here we will digitize major point features like spot height or a meteorological station or a post office and so on as a single digitized point stage 3 will involve digitizing most of the line features here we will digitize line features like roads or rivers or any networks as a series of points which will be joined to form a line segment in some of the gis packages lines are referred as arcs and the start and the end point will be referred to as nodes the stage 4 involves digitizing aerial features the aerial or the polygons are here digitized as a series of points linked by the line segment it should be highly noted that the start and the end point should join to form a complete area or a polygon and the stage 5 will be adding additional attribute information to the digitized polygon or the line or the point feature the major drawback associated with a manual digitizing is that it is a tedious and a time consuming process now let's look into how we will reduce that time consuming and tedious process with the help of an automatic or on screen digitizing automatic digitizing is the process that are generally used when large number of complex features like topographic maps contours land uses and so on needs to be digitized basically we uses two methods in automatic digitizing 
one is the scanning method and the other one is the automatic line following method scanner is a piece of hardware for converting an analog source format into digital raster of or uh, format this is the method that we generally use nowadays thus scanning is the most common method of automatic digitizing especially when the raster data is required for data encoding a scanner generally will be having a light source a background and a lens basically we are generally uh, using three types of scanners one is a flat bed scanner the other one is a uh, rotating drum scanner and the third one is a large format uh, feed scanners a large format feed scanner is the most suitable one among these three as this type is relatively cheap quick and accurate than a flat bed and a rotating drum scanner now let's look into what is an electronic data transfer if the digital copy of a data compatible with our GIS is already available, those data can be input into GIS through electronic data transfer. However, it should be noted that the data to be input should be same digital format that is being recognized by GIS. If not, the process of digital data transfer should be followed by data conversion. The electronic data transfer will also be necessary if the data has been purchased from another agency that originally encoded the data. You can take the example of Survey of India that provides digital topo sheets for users that can be transferred directly to GIS without any encoding process. So these are the major type of data inputting techniques that we used in our GIS. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Post your queries in the comment box. I wish everyone a great day ahead. Thank you.